This inside line is all about the suspension for the 2020 newer Jeep Gladiator. I'm going to go into what suspension I went with and why, show you some tips if you're going to be installing it at home, and go over the on-road and off-road benefits of modifying the suspension for your Gladiator. Let's get to it. Okay, so let's go over a few quick basics. Now, I have tested a one inch lift and one inch spacer on this platform previous to this. And what I can tell you is if you wanna run a 37 inch tall tire, no, you don't really need a tall suspension lift. That being said, if you plan on taking this thing off-road, it will greatly benefit from one. The challenge with the Gladiator platform is that it is very long. And so on even the easiest trail, if you're doing a lot of uphill climbing, you're gonna find that it's very common to hit the frame rail of the Jeep. So I needed to get this thing a little bit higher before I took off on my trip uh, to Easter Jeep Safari earlier this year. And so what I ended up getting is a three inch J Venture kit from JKS Manufacturing. Now I've used JKS kits in the past on Wranglers and really enjoyed how their springs rode and basically the quality of the suspensions. I wanted also something that wasn't gonna be super tall so it wasn't gonna be impractical to still put my kids in and out of this thing and and really use it. I use this Jeep for hauling dirt bikes and a lot of other things that having something with a six inch lift just didn't make sense. So that's what I picked. Um, got it installed here in the garage. Doing so, not a terribly complicated thing. You, you can do it with hand tools. I did have the advantage of using uh, a few power tools to make it a little bit faster. You know, floor jack, jack stands, not a really complicated deal. You gotta be cautious about the passenger side frame rail as it does have the gas tank. And basically you just have to turn the jack stand uh, to make sure you can get underneath there a little bit more easily. First thing you go ahead and blast off are the rear sway bar links. Uh, you can go ahead and get rid of those. You're not gonna be reusing them. After that, go ahead and start working on getting the shocks done. Now the big thing here, make sure that there's weight off of the axle so you can easily slide the lower shock bolt out and you're good to go. Now up top, JKS recommends you removing the plastic inner uh, liner. I didn't find that you needed to do that. It's very flimsy plastic. You can just kind of push it out of the way and get the shock out. Uh, I will say it is necessary to remove the rear track bar bolt so you can get the coil springs out and if you want to make your life a little bit easier go ahead and break loose those big 24 millimeter bolts uh, for the control arms. As you see it right here the reason the axle is not drooping is because there's so much tension on those rear uh, control arm bolts. Now I ended up just putting in the new springs. I had to uh, use a wedge here and kind of push uh, the, the rear coil to get it set in place. On the uh, driver's side, I ended up using a slide hammer and setting the tire on it to act as a little bit more weight so I could get the coil spring in. It was a little bit of a pain in the butt. In hindsight, probably should have just uh, taken the control arm bolts loose, but got it in there, had to spin the coil around to make sure it was lined up correctly. Not a big deal. Uh, in terms of finishing out the rear suspension, you have a new set of bump stop spacers that bolt using existing holes on the axle. And then you have a set of uh, uh, Fox 2.0. Uh, these are IFP internal floating piston shocks that you can put in. I opted for these, the standard shocks or the JKS ones. Uh, not a big deal, just be sure to install the top first. Uh, after that, uh, you will have a new set of rear sway bar links that bolt in place and you can go ahead and put the rear track bar bolt back in and then now move to the front. To raise the front, I placed the floor jack under the front control arm mounts and the jack stand right behind the leading cross member that's just behind the lower control arms. To remove the shocks, you just need an 18 millimeter, it buzzes out pretty quickly. To remove the coil, you just have to make sure you've got enough tension off of that front axle. And now you can put the new coil in 
and the three inch provided bump stop spacer. This is gonna uh, limit the up travel now by three inches, but obviously you now have three inches of lift. Now to do the control arms, uh, the big thing you need to note here is you'll get the con new control arms in, but you don't wanna tighten them until there's actually weight on the vehicle. Now you've got a new set of uh, sway bar disconnects. Obviously I have a Rubicon, so I don't have to use the quick pins that are uh, included with this, but if you don't, uh, you're gonna use a little bit different hardware. Now, one thing I did goof up on is somehow or another, I forgot to film me uh, putting in and adjusting the front track bar, but here it is. Uh, JKS sends an adjustable front track bar. You set it to about 34 inches, bolt it in, paint mark your bolts, and uh, you're good to go testing. Now it is worth mentioning that I opted for the Fox 2.0 through shaft steering stabilizer. I've had great luck with these in the past with the compression adjuster on it. This one does not have the ability to fine tune it. I sort of wish it did. That one was going to be a little bit more money. I think that for me, this was going to be fine. If I'm going to spend even more money on the steering, I probably will go down the road of the hydraulic assist, but I wanted to at least try this. And uh, so far it's been really good. Gives you a pretty tight on center feel. These things I know can feel a little loose at times. This definitely helps with that. Now JKS sells this kit as a three inch for a Rubicon model and a 3.5 for a non Rubicon. Now the big difference really I think uh, to keep in mind is the Rubicon models and the Mojave models have Highline flares. So that's going to give you an extra two inches of clearance in the wheel well which means on this particular model, so on the Rubicon, I'm able to run a 37 inch tall tire, which is what they recommend uh, without any rubbing. Now they do say, depending on backspacing, you may find that you do rub a little bit on the plastic. I'm running a 37 by 1250 R17 Nitto Trail Grappler with an AEV Bora Dual Sport wheel. This AEV wheel has 5.72 inches of backspacing, so it keeps it really tucked underneath the wheel well, kind of like stock. And that's a huge advantage when you're trying to articulate and sweep this axle and keep it in the fender. So you don't really have to worry about it rubbing on the outside of the fender because it's staying tucked real nicely whenever it's articulating. So I love this combo. Um, I'll put some links in the video description about how I've put this together. And like I say, I've got thousands of miles on these tires, super happy with them. This combo is what I took to Moab Utah back. And uh, you know, in terms of a mud terrain radial, I don't think that there's any that are much quieter. Uh, it's a very heavy duty tire. It's got a super thick sidewall. It's one of the reasons I really like it. If you're really gonna be wheeling your Gladiator, um, even if you're daily driving, like I feel like this is a good tire to look at. Now, one of the biggest complaints I have about the Gladiator especially the Rubicon, is how lightly valved it is from the factory. Now, a easy way to show you an example of this is this Gladiator right here is still running the stock coils and stock shocks. Let me show you just how easy it is to move. Yeah, so uh, that's just with one hand. So you're going to feel that when you're going down the road. Now, some people really like that softness. For me, I don't love it. I feel like it, it, it bottoms out too quickly and it's just not ideal. Now let me show you the difference of that with this new JKS suspension. Okay, so let's see how easy it is for this to bounce. One hand, same thing, same weight, but holy cow, <laughs> that's a lot harder. Now, I don't want that to be interpreted as this is a stiff suspension. In fact, I actually think this is kind of way it should have been from the factory. Um, it feels much more planted, much more solid. Uh, when you're hitting big bumps in the highway, now it's not bucking the suspension. Uh, Off-road significant difference in just how stable it feels. Uh, the rear suspension of the Gladiator doesn't articulate as freely as the front, just based on how the suspension's designed. But in general, I like uh, how much tighter the vehicle feels with this JKS uh, setup. Now post lift, I did take this to low range 4x4 to check the alignment. I found it was towed in just a touch, so we fixed that. Uh, put it on there, forklift just to check some clearances. Uh, 
I knew that I had, wouldn't have any issue with rubbing because I've tested this in the past and these wheel wells are just massive. I will say that the lower control arms gave me five degrees of caster. Uh, that's been fine for drivability. Uh, these things can take a lot of caster and still drive fantastic and you don't really get into issue with the drive shaft. Been really happy with uh, how it handles. I can hand the key uh, to this to anybody and they can drive it without an issue. Okay, so let's get into off-road. The biggest challenge when it comes to wheeling the Jeep Gladiator has to do less with departure angle and more to do with breakover angle. With a 137 inch wheelbase, it's not uncommon to drag the belly of the Jeep off-road. Adding 37s definitely helps. For those of you that have been following the channel for a while, you know that I've tested this tire and wheel combo with no lift on this Jeep and with just one inch of lift and a one inch front bump stop. Now, having spent time wheeling with that setup and now obviously moving to a three inch, I can tell you without a doubt that that extra little bit of moving up to a three inch lift makes a significant difference off road. For you numbers guys, the distance from the bottom of the frame rail to the ground is now 18 and 3 quarter inches. That's measured at the center of the Jeep. This was also measured with 30 PSI of air in the tires. Obviously off road, you're going to be dropping air to get more traction and ride comfort. So you're losing a little bit of that. But overall, this was a big improvement over stock. Now what I will say in terms of how the vehicle rides off road is it is a big improvement compared to the factory setup. The main reason is you no longer feel like the Jeep wants to blow through the up travel and bounce around as much. It feels more controlled and significantly smoother. This is at both high speed and low speed. At three inches it still handles fine. The control arms aren't at an extreme angle and I feel like overall the Jeep is just way more solid uh, than it was before and, and I say this for both on road and off. You know for the price quality and really simplicity of the kit, I think it's a solid upgrade. It still retains factory style rubber bushings, so there's no noise and clank associated with this kit. There's no complicated service intervals or anything like that. So that's my review of my JKS suspension kit. I hope you guys found it helpful and informative. If you ever have any questions for me, you can always hit me up directly at Ollie Mansour Editor on Instagram. Uh, please put a comment below be happy to uh, answer anything you have right there as well got some really neat stuff in store for the uh, gladiator um I, I love this platform this thing is a lot of fun to to build and uh, i've got some big things coming very soon and going to be taking this thing on another cross-country venture uh it seems like it's coming up pretty fast so i hope you guys enjoy it please like subscribe and we'll hopefully see you guys on the trail soon take care